I get the question a lot, Joe, of how do you know what your next step mm -hmm. is, what to do next? And I, I, I tell people to pick something and try it, something of interest. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a waste of time. Now, I'm not saying go out and quit your day job and do something extreme. I'm saying, you know, you can volunteer for different right. things uh, just to see if you if you would like doing uh, that function or, or, or whatnot. But it's never a waste of time because you're going to learn something and you're going to develop some skills and you're going to make some connections that's going to benefit you somewhere in the future. Right. Nothing that I've ever done, Joe, has been a waste of time. Yeah. It's been a stepping stone for, for where I am now. And then the other side of that, Joe, is sometimes because we've had experiences where, oh, I'm going to try my hand at this. Because I've tried my hand at, at a number of things and, and not just within my career, outside of my career, entrepreneurial minded. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when I think about it, it's just hilarious. Uh, but as you are trying to figure out what that thing is for you, what that that next move is for you, sometimes you you try this, you try that. And, and you start to feel like, well, people are watching and, and thinking I have no clue what I'm doing. And, and really, and, and I know I've talked to so many people this I tried this and this didn't work out. And I know people have this opinion and I had to let that go. Mm -hmm. I had to let it completely let it go. Because again, it goes back to, there's something I learned in it. Joe, I sold uh, children's uh, party supplies. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's on your and list of things you've things done. There's things that I've learned in that. I'm that's sorry. on your list of things you've done that you can bring up in a that, meeting. You can say, need someone to sell party supplies? I'm your person. <laughs> but, but, you know, now I know, you know, there's different things that I know how to do. I know how yeah. to, you know, get products made and, and things like that. And, you know, skills that I can use elsewhere. I, now, I am not trying to go and find party <laughs> supplies for anything. But there are things that I've learned yeah. from that experience, yeah. you know. And so um, that's why I say none of this wasted. Really happy to have Nicole Calhoun with me today on Titans of Transition. Uh, Nicole and I met on the John Maxwell team and as we were serving together in that organization, um, we got to know each other a little bit more and it turned out we had a similar background and I've been wanting to ask Nicole to come on the podcast because I think she has some, some great insights that she can share with those who feel a little bit stuck. So Nicole, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to, for this conversation and to uh, be here. This was a volunteer kind of position that we were in, um, helping pull together data from the very large John C. Maxwell Leadership Training Organization. Since we both have a background in IT, we volunteered, but we kind of got enlisted into these different roles of helping to serve. And, and uh, it was great getting to know you then. And what I didn't know, of course, I knew as part of the John Maxwell organization that you were also trained and certified as a coach, trainer, and speaker. But I didn't know you were doing so much speaking. Can you, can you talk to us a little bit about the speaking uh, engagements? I've seen your postings on LinkedIn in particular. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah. Uh, so as you know, Joe, we, we kind of talked a little bit about my passion uh, for a career advancement uh, with women in STEM. And so... Uh, as part of the John Maxwell community, I've gotten connected with different people who have uh, similar passions to mine, and uh, one of which is the empowering women industry. And so I'm very closely connected with them, and I've been very much involved with it for probably the past five years. And so you'll see me pop up here and there uh, speaking with women, uh, not just in technology, but women in other uh, fields where there's not as many women within those fields. So you have women in construction, uh, women in welding, uh, in, in just different areas that uh, we're not traditionally expected to be within those different mm -hmm. fields. So uh, those are some of the things that, that I'm really closely connected to. And then there's some other uh, speaking engagements I've done in the IT space because of my background in IT. And it's more so um, centered around my story and, and, and my passion for career advancement, professional development, you know, those areas where we want to move forward in our careers and professionally, but we don't know exactly what it is that we need to do to get there. And so a lot of my uh, speaking engagements are um, booked by organizations that have an audience uh, that are in that area where they they feel like, well, I know that there's more for me to do. I just don't know how to move forward. And I, I totally enjoy doing this, Joe. I really do. <laughs> It's just interesting because uh, I think like you, I, well, I don't want to presume, but 
For me, um, I came to get very interested in coaching probably 20 years ago, at least 20 years ago, after I had my own coach that really helped me professionally. And um, I, my desire to help others um, through those kind of periods of time where they lacked clarity or just felt a little stuck. And, and just before we pressed record, we were chatting about that and how there's, there is quite a few people who do get into that situation where for one reason or another, they feel there's just something missing or they feel stuck. And it sounds to me like a lot of your engagements, both speaking and I assume coaching as well is kind of in that space. Yeah. So it, it really, like you said, it was born out of your, your experience uh, having been right. coached. Mine was born out of my experience to develop myself personally. Uh, we, you know, you mentioned that my background is in technology. So I spent uh, 20 years as a software uh, engineer, software developer. Uh, you know, the, the titles change over time. I was a computer programmer at one time, but it's all the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but I spent 20 years doing that. And, uh, but even prior to that, I knew that there was always something more for me to do, but I, I don't know if it was that 20 year mark or I, I'm not sure what it was, but I started feeling, you know, it's time for me to kind of take those skills that I have that I've cultivated in that role as a developer, a software engineer, and to see what else I can do with that. Uh, discovering that I had transferable skills that I could use in, in, in uh, different areas uh, for different roles and deciding to take this professional development journey. Mm -hmm. And it was on that journey that I realized that, uh, well, one, other people started noticing the transformation in me. And uh, they, you mentioned, I, I can't remember if it was prior to we hit recording, if you mentioned Toastmasters or now, but, you know, getting involved in Toastmasters yeah. to improve my communication skills and things like that, because I was very techy and I spoke mm -hmm. very techy mm -hmm. <laughs> and people didn't necessarily understand <laughs> what I said all the right. time. Uh, but working on that professional development and then starting to help other people um, work to develop themselves in that way as well and watching them grow and, and advance themselves in their careers, experiencing promotions and trans job transitions and things like that. I realized I really enjoyed seeing that transformation and being a part of it and knowing that I had some type of role in that. And, and really that's like you, that that's how that passion uh, was birthed in me. Yeah. I think that's really, that's, I resonate with that a lot and it is a journey. Um, and now in, you have a role, a VP level role, I believe in, in learning and development and it, it's really interesting. Uh, so I think, the importance of that to, to career is so huge, almost regardless of what your career is. I mean, it's the relationships. I mean, it's not like we we're sitting off on a missile silo, probably a bad example, waiting for someone to give us the order to fire a missile or something crazy, or we're, we're isolated and alone. Let's think of another example where you're just working okay. in a wood shop or something. <laughs> I think that's probably a lot better. Um, this will be in the outtakes. So you're working on a wood shop or something like that. You're just creative and it's just for yourself and you don't have to worry about it. But in the modern era, most of careers have a huge uh, component that requires interacting with other living human beings. And in, in technology, especially in the early days, you are valued primarily for your technical contribution and you're kind of off to the side a little bit. But as you want to grow in your career and you're not sure what moves to make, I often find the people I coach saying, well, tell me about your relationship with your boss or tell me about the relationship with your internal customers. And I tend to get stares, blank stares back. And I think that is totally on the developmental path. That really is, isn't something that you get taught, you know, as you're learning technical skills. There's some of it comes in when you're doing business analysis and things like that. You need to know how to interview people and gather requirements, but it's still kind of sterile in a way. And um, yeah, that's where the big growth areas I think really are. So for me, um, I came into the whole technology space from 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 the laboratory as a scientist, as as a user of a particular application, and then shifted into IT. Not so much from programming. I was dangerous in programming. I, I was. This is back in. <laughs> Fortran 77. And I was like, why do I have to start in this particular column? I just don't understand it. Um, so I was very dangerous. So that, it was good for me to get away from that. Um, however, what I found was that really it was being able to influence others, you know, and being able to understand what their requirements were and, and 
deliver solutions for them, but you had to listen. But sometimes you had to influence. That ties into John Maxwell's statement about what is leadership, not influence, nothing more, nothing less. And it seems like such a, you know, catchy thing to say, but it's so true, don't you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. When you, I mean, if you think about the further you go into your career and the more responsibility uh, that you have in, in, in your career, much of what we get done is through people. Yeah. And if you can't influence people, then you're going to have a hard time gaining buy-in. <laughs> you're going to have a hard time, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have a hard time with change management. You're going to have a hard time in so many different areas if you don't have that influence with people. We, we're we not on islands. We can't accomplish anything by ourselves. We Everything that we do within, uh, I don't care what your role is, it's going to require some type of connection, collaboration with people. And that influence is a big part of, uh, uh, that's one of the skills and, and I, I don't know, core competency, whatever you want to call it, that is really important to anybody's career, regardless of what it is that you do. Um, and like you mentioned, um, within technology, the push has always been to make sure your skills, you're up to date on your tech, your technical skills. Uh, it's not that those soft skills are not valued. They're just not emphasize as far as uh, developmental areas. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really true. Now, uh, one of the um, organizations that I think you've you've spoken to or you're involved with was STEM, right? Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that was really interesting. And some people may not even yeah. know what that organization is, so I really didn't mind. Yeah, so STEM is really not an organization. It's really a classification of different roles uh, that where we see there is a population uh, that is underrepresented. And so STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And these are jobs and roles where you don't see a, a much, it's a low population of women mm -hmm. and also uh, minorities. And so there's been a focus in, I would say, a real push in the last 10 years to start at the, the elementary level, you know, in the school, the elementary uh, level of schooling, to educate on these different uh, jobs and roles and opportunities um, for young people to gain that interest. Uh, people do what they see other people do. We're more likely to say, I wanna be a teacher if all we see is teachers. Mm -hmm. I wanna be a doctor if all we see are doctors. If we begin to see scientists uh, that look like us, if we begin to see technologists and, and those other areas, and then we'll have more, more of a population of uh, more rounded population of people in in those roles. And so I am really involved in a way where I work a lot with. I don't. By the way, I don't do as much coaching as I used to. <laughs> I would say that <laughs> because of my, you know, my yeah. role that you mentioned earlier. And so I, I, I still do speaking, but I, I don't do as much coaching as I used to. But my focus in my speaking and my coaching was really on those areas because if I can help the next person, the next person that looks like mm -hmm. me, and particularly it's women that that uh, really they they they're more drawn to me, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know. Not that I'm not drawn to them, but they kind of find me because of my story, yeah. because of my background, because they've heard my struggles of advancement, because they've heard me say this is how I was able to. To, to get where I am, or these were some missing parts that I didn't know I was missing, right? And so um, that area of STEM is really something that is a passion for me because, again, when you show up in these areas, um, when when I was in technology, it, I would be the only person on my team that looked like yeah. me. And so if I can help the next uh, next person feel confident in, in their skills and what they do and what they bring to the table, and in advancing in their role, then I want to do that. I want to be a part of that. That That is something that I absolutely love doing. That, that's really, uh, I think, great. And, and it's interesting because I one of the things I, I know I'm retired, but one of the things I do on the side is I, I facilitate a couple professional IT leadership groups, one at the CIO level and another one at the director level. And uh, we started doing some br breakout meetings, uh, most of them remote meetings, for women. Because 
even in those organizations, even in this sort of representative collection of leaders, there's a low percentage of women. And, and um, one, of the, one of the key issues, I think, is just what we're talking about is how, how do you get more representation? How do we get more um, support for women advancing? What are the real issues that the guys don't want to talk about, right? I mean, what are those key things? And I've been starting to invite folks in and may have to invite you in for a special call. Um, other Absolutely. leaders, uh, women leaders, to to speak to these very specific issues and real challenges, and there is definitely underrepresentation there. That's that's totally for sure. And uh, I have to say, some of the best bosses I've had in my career were women. <laughs> Far none. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I what I find is it is that when you think about mentorship, right? Um, if my if all of my manager, if managers or my bosses are men, there's nothing wrong with that. But I find that like people go off to lunch together. Yes. They spend more time together. And there's that natural mentoring or relationship partnership that occurs where you're learning these things that you need for your role and to advance. And when that opportunity is not there, or I mean, the opportunity has to be uh, intentional, right? It's because it's not a natural relationship. And right. so while women are very capable, I mean, we run houses. <laughs> and <laughs> not, work. That's what men do. Men do that too. You know, we all do it, right? Yeah. We are all capable of doing it. But there are things that I feel like have been missing that we didn't know. Yeah. And having those types of uh, partnerships, those mentorships, um, opportunities I feel have been key for others. And so right now, um, part of what I do, I feel like I am a mentor to other women. I try to mentor at least not just coach, but mentor it mm -hmm. other at least one or two women at a time, right? At a given time. And and that's because there's just things that that we have not been information we haven't been privy to. And it's not that it's been hidden. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it has not been a natural yeah. occurrence. Right. Well, this is, a, I think, a good point to maybe pivot and talk about your journey a little bit more. Uh, you hinted at a few minutes ago talking about uh, lessons that you had learned and, and you know, the way you, you answer those questions to other women and to others. So can we do that? Can we talk about your, your, your journey? And, you know, you, you, you yeah. talked about starting out as a programmer, programmer analyst, and then you know, programmer analyst became software engineer, but it's really pretty yeah. much the same work. But <laughs> but tell us tell us a little yeah. bit about that. And you, I, you dropped a few few words in here that I suspect are going to be important, like intentionality or being intentional and, and those kinds of things. So tell us a little bit about your journey and how you you got to your success that you're in right now. Yeah. So uh, as a uh, again at one point in my uh, career as a software engineer, I you know, I decided that I wanted to expound on my skills, expand my skills rather, and um, see what else I can do, what else I was capable of. Uh, but I kind of stayed within technology, mm -hmm. you know, even though I wasn't developing anymore. I moved into project management. I wanted to take, again, those uh, transferable skills and use them in those areas. And you kind of mentioned, you know, when you're doing analysis and and, and things like that. And, and there were some roles I was in we, where we didn't have uh, BAs and we didn't have, <laughs> you know, we didn't have PM. So we had to fill it in the blank right. <laughs> to, to do some of these things. And, and it was a good thing for me because it, it kind of opened the door for me to go into project management. So entering into project management, uh, I was, I don't want to say forced, but I had to develop uh, emotional intelligence, oh, yeah. right? There are some things that are natural to us. But there are some things that self-awareness, right, relationship management, social awareness, all these different things that uh, me as a developer working in my small team, I may not have had to develop. But as a project manager, I had to have conversations with people that were my peers and I had to have conversations with people that were well above my yeah. peers. And I and, and I had to be I was responsible <laughs> to delivering the project and. And, and to communicating what was going on. And, and so that kind of pushed me Absolutely. into um, uh, <laughs> the, 
developing these different leadership skills. Well, you know, such a learning. great example, if I interrupt you a second, such a great example, because those who may not be familiar with what project managers have to do, at least inside of information technology, you don't have people reporting directly to you in these kinds of roles. You definitely yeah. have to be able to influence people. Not only do you have to know what's going on and with a myriad of different tasks at the same time and track who's supposed to be doing what on what the time scale is and manage all that, all that very analytical things, but at the same time, you have to go and, and convince people <laughs> to stay on the, on the, with their commitments they've made. And, and you're right, they're all throughout the, not even within IT, they're all throughout the business and all up and down the management chain. So it is a great example of how leadership really is influence. And if you have, a, oh, yeah. if you've been in a, a, a job that is delivering against a specification, you still had to do like you said, BA business analysis, you still had to talk to your end customers to a certain level, but there's a difference between saying, what do you want? And this is what you committed to. Are you going to get it there on time? There's oh, yeah. a huge difference there. What a great example. And, and why can't we get it there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it, there are so many, as you're talking about that, that was a lesson on influence. Oh yeah. That I had to, find ways to connect with people. You know, we talk about common ground and, and, and you know that there's different, uh, we have different backgrounds, mm -hmm. right? We have different experiences. And so trying to find that avenue to be able to connect and to build relationships, because if I didn't build these relationships, I wouldn't be able to influence these people. I could name drop, sure. but that only gets you so far. You, know, you, you There is an element of gaining trust. All of these things, that were these soft skills, right? <laughs> that that's not learned in uh, keeping up with your technical skills. So I had to learn how to do all these yeah. things to just just to get my job done, yeah. <laughs> just to get my job right. done. And then they had com conflicting commitments, competing com commitments, right? Yeah. Uh, the the people that you work with on these project teams, they're on other projects. Yeah. And how do I convince them that? <laughs> can you put your time my project. on this thing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes so, you have to then reach out to the other parties who have their time committed and try to work out deals. It's, it's a very multifaceted position. And it's interesting when you stepped into that, was it sort of, were you thrown into the deep end or did you have mentors to work with you through the process? It was pretty much go for it, Nicole. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I was, speaking to someone recently and I said, once you get to a certain level, you just kind of have to learn it. You have to figure I it know. out. Yeah. yeah. And so while I didn't have uh, official mentors, uh, I did have one or two people who helped me to understand how to do this within the org that we yeah. were in. Right. Because it, it looks different everywhere you go. Uh, but I, I was very much thrown into the deep end. And although we don't like being thrown out there, there's a lot that we can, we can learn, you know, I tell people it was either sink or swim mm -hmm. and I didn't want to sink. Right. <laughs> so I had to swim, but there's a lot that I learned and a lot that I am capable of doing now that I wasn't capable of before, because as a, a developer uh, at the time, now I know we're in an agile world now yeah. and, and keep in mind, I was a mainframe programmer. Okay. Not very agile. So, yeah. Yeah. So now that we're in an agile yeah. world, you, you're more, you're, you are facing more of your stakeholders, more of the senior leaders, but in more the world often. that I was in, I kind of hid behind mm. uh, people. And, and even my end users that I interacted with, uh, they were not at the senior level. Mm -hmm. And so coming, coming out of that role into project management, I, I had to toughen up. I had to learn. Some of it was learning on the job. Some of it was through what I, I talked to you about, just the professional development courses and training that I, that I took on. Uh, but even in that, you know, you asked me about my journey, even in that I was stuck for a long time where I felt like I couldn't get to the next level. What did you do? And, uh, what did I yeah. do? I, well, I, 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 I continued to push forward. Uh, I continued to grow myself at the same time. I challenged myself in other areas to say, okay, you know, Nicole, I, and I did move out of project management. I moved out of project management and started working more in the IT risk area. It was still 
managing, I was still managing things, uh, but it wasn't project management in a, a traditional sense. So I did that for a couple of years. Um, but eventually what I did, and I think this is really going to be key for me, there is a talk that I do that's called um, Being Uniquely You, The Courage to Be Uniquely You. I took a step back and I realized, I, I asked myself, Nicole, what is hindering you? What is keeping you from moving forward? I can't point the finger at anyone else and say, I mean, to some degree, there are some limitations that we have within the workplace, but what can I do to push myself forward? So some of the things that I noticed was I was not showing up completely as myself, mm -hmm. meaning because I had a perception of what I should be in the workplace, I didn't offer up the skills, skills that I had that I was very much capable mm -hmm. of. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I had to, I had to kind of peel that back and deal with that. Uh, I also had to learn how to toot my own horn. I, I was in uh, a mindset that I've, I've been, I've grown up to be and in, in, uh, been taught to be humble and meek and things like that. But in that, I understood that to me, never talk about the good that you do, your accomplishments and things like that. And I had to go back and relearn some things that, you know, if, if I, if I do something wonderful or if I run a marathon, I don't care where I come in at, but if I run a marathon, I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to be excited about it. And basically I'm tooting my own horn, but I'm not being quiet. Right. And so I have to learn how to communicate my value. Right. right. And own that. And so that was one of the things that I did. And I also had to understand what I brought to the table and, and stop diminishing uh, my capabilities. Stop assuming that everyone can do what I can do. Stop assuming that, that oh, it's, it's what I'm doing is small. It's not a big deal. I, I had to, within myself, uh, recognize that I am bringing something significant to the table. That whole mind shift yeah. right uh it it i think that was one of the key things that helped me to end up going to the next level and and so going to the next level for me was when i said you know what nicole um you know that this is your passion so why not start doing that full time and that's actually when i went to the next level when i owned all that and and i owned it within my passion that career advancement yeah. professional development helping people advance themselves that's when I was able to elevate to the next level. Yeah. So that last comment about passion, we've heard a lot about, you know, career advice, talking about getting in touch with your passion. And I do think it's an important element. I like to visualize like a Venn diagram that passion is one of those circles, you know, your skills, your talents, or I would use the word gifting, mm -hmm. your, your oh, yeah. natural abilities, because you can learn skills and you can be proficient in skills. But I find that the things that come more naturally to you, give you energy and light you up. Oh, yeah. When that overlaps with your passion, then you're starting to get someplace. You've started to get clarity and identified a bit of a sweet spot. Of course, there's the practical things too, like, can I make any money at this? It's a bubble or circle that needs yeah. to be looked at. But um, yeah, I think that's that point you made about humility, though, if we can go back to that just a second. We have a, I think in our in our cultural upbringing, some of us have, that mistaken, and you you kind of underlined that mistaken concept that being humble means not not being truthful about what your capabilities are. I think the idea is you don't want to get too puffed up and beyond what's the same estimate of your abilities. You know, um, yeah. if you're being truthful and you're putting it out, support myself. That's yeah. another. If they're in a generous way, like I can help with that. I can do that, and you offer it. And then that really benefits the organization. People will sense if you're being authentic or if you're trying to puff yourself up either out of uh, your own expanded view of yourself or <laughs> out of insecurity, because that happens too. People try to get accepted by kind of overselling their skills at times or their abilities. So I think that's a huge, that was a big aha moment, I think, for you. And you realized I'm really holding a lot back here. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, great. It was. And Joe, I have to say, it was hard. Yeah. It, it took some getting used to. And I had to be able to um, 
talk about my accomplishments and my my skills and my talents, my abilities in a way that was comfortable for me. And so when I talk to other people that that where this has been something that's kind of held them back, I tell them it has you have to be com- comfortable with it. You have to be able to do it in a way that's comfortable for you. For me, I tell it in a story format. I talk about it in a, a, a star story. Mm-hmm. I use that right mm-hmm. uh, story format. Uh, but until you're comfortable with doing it, it's always going to feel awkward. Yeah. What I'm talking about, uh, it didn't all happen at once. It didn't all Wasn't happen. Wasn't an aha in a moment. Year. Yeah, yeah. Even even uh, uh, understanding that I had to bring my full self to the table, uh, it didn't all happen at once. And, and so I'm saying that to say that. You know, when you find, when you hear people's success story, for some reason, we believe that it just, in one moment, they weren't successful, the next moment, they were. And it's really not, not like that. Yeah. It's like an onion. You start peeling back layers and, and realizing, wait, this area is hindering me. The way I'm thinking in this area is hindering me. And what am I going to do about mm-hmm. it? So it wasn't instant, you know, and I'm hoping that the listeners will understand that, that it. It, it's very much normal to reach a certain point, <laughs> feel like you're getting nowhere, but you are, yeah. and then realize there's something else you need to work. Well, that's on. actually that's very- it's actually when you when one says that it kind of might be disappointing, but actually it's a good thing because with each of these kind of revelations that you might have, there's a bit of risk, and so it gives you the capability. There's a couple of things I think of. It gives you the capability of taking small incremental risks. And validating you're going in the right direction, um, so that's really should be comforting. Um, the other the other thing is that we're not particularly good at having the long view in <laughs> mind. You know, I, I like to use the analogy, and I've kind of overused this in this podcast, but of climbing mountains. You know, if you've ever done that or climbed shoulders, <laughs> I you know, I mean, when you live in Colorado, you take offense of people having these small hills and calling them mountains, but you, you can't see the summit. You, you might think you have that kind of long range view or know where you're headed or you have the ultimate solution. But often that learning journey is, you know, summiting all these shoulder peaks and then reassessing yeah. where you are and replotting your course and going forward from there. So it should be encouraging to yeah. think. I like peeling the onion, though. I'm going to use that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's definitely a journey. Uh, but it is very worth it. And, and there's some rewards at every, you know, Stage. those smaller little uh, peaks that you achieve. Um, I, you know, as I think back, when I moved into project management, and I did that for a few years, mm-hmm. I realized I didn't like project oh, management. Yeah. Uh, but it was not a waste of time for me. Ooh, that's good. I, I learned what I liked and what, what I you didn't like. like. <laughs> yes, but I also I also grew yeah. significantly in different areas yeah. that I'm using today. So it wasn't a waste of time. And I get the question a lot, Joe, of how do you know what your next step mm-hmm. is, what to do next? And I, I, I tell people to pick something and try it, something of interest. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be a waste of time. Now, I'm not saying go out and quit your day job and do something extreme. I'm saying, you know, you can volunteer for different right. things uh, just to see if you if you would like doing, uh, you know, uh, that function or, or, or whatnot. But it's never a waste of time because you're going to learn something and you're going to develop some skills and you're going to make some connections that's going to benefit you somewhere in the future. Right. Nothing that I've ever done, Joe, has been a waste of time. Yeah. It's been a stepping stone for for where I am now. Is that a view looking back in time? Oh, it's looking yeah. back. <laughs> because because I yeah, it's definitely looking. But back. But I would say now, having been, I think after you've been through several of these different shifts, that you learn that you realize you learn something from it. Now, probably as you look at something going forward, you're a little bit more intentional. You have that in your in your mind. I learned something, so worst case, I'm going to learn something. <laughs> Yes, but you don't know that right. when you're young, younger and early in your career. Yeah. And sometimes you, you're in the middle of something and 
it just feels like you're jumping back and forth and it can get very discouraging. You're not quite sure why. Yep. People sometimes think there's something wrong with them if they go and take a position or a role and it's really hard and they don't feel real good about it. I think it's very good to have that glass half full perspective saying, well, at least I, I'm, what is it about this that I don't like? All right. Yeah. Given the choice, I wouldn't do this again. You know, maybe they're just missing some skill or knowledge. That's always could be the case. But if, if they have this requisite skills, knowledge, and they still just, it drains them. I always like to use the energy diagnostic. If it just drains you, mm -hmm. you feel like you're dragging a boulder up a hill. <laughs> Write this down. <laughs> do not repeat this. Because there's enough. Everyone has something. I'm back to gifting again. Everyone is gifted in certain things. And it's almost the opposite. It's like you could do that 12 hours a day and feel energized by it. You can get lost in it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, you go, where'd the time go? But if it's yeah. the opposite, it is huge value to know what you want to say no to in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other side of that, Joe, is sometimes because we've had experiences where, oh, I'm going to try my hand at this. Because I've tried my hand at, at a number of things. And, and not just within my career, outside of my career, uh, entrepreneurial minded. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> when I think about it, it's just hilarious. Uh, but you, as you are trying to figure out what that thing is for you, what that that next move is for you. Sometimes you you try this, you try that, and and you start to feel like, well, people are watching and, and thinking I have no clue what I'm doing. And and really, and, and I know I've talked to so many people that said, I tried this and this didn't work out. And I know people have this opinion. And I had to let that go. Mm -hmm. I had to let it completely let it go. Because again, it goes back to there's something I've learned in it. Joe, I sold uh, children's, uh, party supplies. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's on your and list of things you've done. Things that I've learned in that. I'm that's sorry. on your list of things you've done that you can bring up in a that, meeting. You can is... say, need someone to sell party supplies. I'm your person. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, now I know, no, there's different things that I know how to do. I know how yeah. to, you know, get products made and, and things like that. And, you know, Skills that I can use elsewhere. I, now, I am not trying to go and find party <laughs> supplies for anything. But there are things that I've learned yeah. from that experience. Yeah. You know, and so um, that's why I say none of this wasted. Well, if you were to think back and if or in your coaching, I know you're not doing that much because you have a full-time job and you also have other things going <laughs> on. So, But speaking, if you were to think back uh, and what advice you would give yourself now that you know what you know, it's that question. Or, you know, if you have a younger or someone earlier in their career that you're coaching, are there certain nuggets that you share with them? I mean, it might wrap some of this stuff together in a certain way. Absolutely. Uh, the first thing is um, become comfortable in who you are. Uh, one of my problems is, I was raised by a very strong-willed mother ah. and I can be very strong-willed and because of the perception of what I thought was expected of me, I kind of held a lot of that back, but it's those things that made me, made me who I am. That's actually <laughs> what I'm really great at, yeah. right? There are situations where I've had to be very analytical as a child. And that made me in, into a very logical person, a problem solver, right? It's some things that have made me very determined. So that's what I was talking about when I was saying, you know, I had to stop holding back who I was and, and be who I am because those things are my superpowers, yes. right? Those are, <laughs> <Your gifts. laughs> there was, yeah, yeah. And the other thing, uh, I think the, one of the big mistakes I made early in my career is the thought that I am here to do my work, complete my work and leave. Mm -hmm. I did not make connections. I did not build my network. And I, I think I could have been further along if I had. And the reason why I say that is the last three positions that I've gotten, I've gotten through my network. Mm -hmm. So I spent prior to uh, the company I'm, I'm, I'm with now, I was at the, my previous company about nine years. And then I spent about I would say another nine years at my current company in the same role. Mm -hmm. 
And within the past seven, eight years, I've been able to take three different roles and three of those roles, I mean, all three of them were through my network. It's huge. Yeah. So building those relationships. relationships yeah. It's important. I, I'm not saying that, you know, that you have to divulge all of your personal business, <laughs> your deepest, darkest secrets with people <laughs> on the job. But what I am saying is these are real people yeah. and make real connections with people. And just doing that uh, helps you to understand, learn about the organization, what's important for the organization, how to uh, uh, politi be politically savvy, <laughs> because that's needed. Yes, it right? is. Yes, it is. So, yeah, those two things. Bring yourself, your whole self to the table. Don't hold back. And uh, make those connections and build your network. That's awesome. And, and those, net, then those networking connections, I, I get a little bit annoyed with, you know, LinkedIn is great in many ways, but you get these connection requests from people. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I am... I'm retired. I have a little side thing I do business, but I don't really need to boost my sales. I, you know what I mean? And I'm getting people yeah. pounding me and I'm like, yeah. oh, this person <laughs> looks like they are actually yeah. in my field and they cloak it sometimes. <laughs> and then I go, I give it about an hour. It's usually about an hour later, I'll get a, another message or an email that'll say, Hey, I've got this product. Would you be interested? I'm like, oh. <laughs> You know, yeah, we're not talking about building your network. No, but what I'm saying is <laughs> the time to think about it and the way to think about it is not it, along those lines. It's not what you get. You, I think the relationships that are of value, you have to enter into them having sort of a servant's kind of perspective. How can you yes. support the other person? And yeah. you, you, you have to build the relationship by giving something, not immediately wanting to take you know, yeah. so anyway, that's my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this has been great. Um, what are you currently in the middle of? Are you have anything coming up that you're going to be doing? Any? Are you going to be rinse and repeating some of your talks, or am I going to get you I... on my uh, <laughs> private uh, CIO group to special call? That'd be one possibility. <laughs> Here I am pulling from the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Strike this. What's oh, coming up goodness. for you, Nicole? Uh, so, you know, what's coming up, I, I do have uh, that organization that I told you I, I work with, I'm a part mm -hmm. of Empowering Women in Industry. Uh, they have some things coming up later, uh, third quarter, I think it's third, fourth quarter that I'll be doing. Uh, with the workload that I have now in, in my uh, job, it kind of limits what sure. I can do. I am working on a new talk. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm not working on it fast <laughs> enough, but it's called Maximize Your Presence. Uh -huh. And it's really about uh, the role of executive presence, uh, the, the role it plays in your career. And so many times people hear that term, or so, many people haven't heard the term, but sometimes when people hear the term executive presence, they automatically think higher level leadership. And that's really not what it's about. Uh, it's about um, uh, the... I don't like to call it the wow factor you bring and, and what people notice about mm -hmm. you when you uh, walk into a space, the thought leadership, you know, just the, it's just the whole encompassing uh, presence that you bring. Why do I want to say the charisma? I don't know what the right word is. Yeah, charisma is part yeah. of it. There's different components yeah. of it, but all of those things combine together between, you know, your knowledge and, and your understanding, your accomplishments, your communication. Um, the way you present yourself, like you said, the charisma, all these things working together uh, helps to uh, relay a, a sense of comp accomplishment, not just accomplishment. That's not the word I was looking for. Uh, confidence in, in yourself, which in turn uh, helps other to be, others to be confident in you. And so I'm working on that, but I am not developing it as fast as I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a good one. And you yeah, think that, yeah, I believe so. that will be, you know, available to anyone who wants to hear it when it's yeah. unveiled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll definitely be watching for that. What's the best way for, for folks to reach you? Just LinkedIn? Yeah, LinkedIn, Nicole, C as in cat, Calhoun, okay. C-A-L-H-O-U-N. Best way to, to reach out to me. Uh, if you send me a message, let me know. 
you connect with me, first of all, send me a message to let me know how you uh, got connected with me. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Okay, well, I'll definitely, in the show notes, I'll, I'll link to your profile. I don't know if that's a good thing to do on YouTube or not, but I will do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Nicole, I really want to thank you for joining us on Titans of Transition. I, I love the work you're doing. Great nuggets shared. I, I love that whole concept of showing up as your whole self um, in particular. That I think that, wow, there's so much around that one. There's so much around that oh, yeah. one. But anyway, it's great to reconnect with you. We had such a fun time working together on uh, the Maxwell Team Projects. I oh, uh, haven't been to a meeting in a while. Maybe I'll see you back there sometime in the next year or so. But uh, again, thanks for joining us on Titans. Thank you, Joe. Hey, thanks for joining me today on Titans of Transition. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please check the show notes for additional information.